right? Um, oh, one's dead. Jesus. Doom. The definitive first-person shooter first released in 1993 is now available on Xbox Game Pass, thanks to Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda. But is this classic title or its sequel worth playing 28 years later on my Xbox Series X? Let's take a look. Doom is the first in a long series of first-person shooters, and the title which really popularised the genre. There were FPS games before this, such as Wolfenstein 3D, but none had the popularity and long-lasting success of Doom. In Doom, your objective is mostly finding keys to locked doors, and eventually getting to an exit which takes you to the next level. However, each map is filled with aggressive demons, and it's up to you and your arsenal of weapons to take them down and escape. The game offers you a variety of different difficulties to play on to help cater from the casual to the hardcore player, and then throws you right into the action. The earlier levels are very easy, and help you learn the game mechanics before they gradually get harder and the real challenge begins. Luckily, as the enemies become more difficult and numerous, your weaponry improves too, starting off with a pistol, then a shotgun, chainsaw, minigun, rocket launcher, plasma gun, and of course the BFG 9000 which decimates everything in its path. The action is fast-paced and encourages run-and-gun gameplay. It's pretty satisfying when you defeat a whole horde of challenging enemies, but overall I feel that the action can become a little samey after a while. It's just going from room to room killing enemies and then trying to find doors and keys, with not enough variation in level design and limited types of enemies to keep it fresh. So honestly, I got a little bored after a few hours play. Maybe Doom is more suited to short plays rather than the long streaming sessions that I did. There is a fair bit of content in this game though. You get four chapters with nine levels each, as well as a pretty decent selection of mods to change things up a bit. These levels vary in length, some only taking a few minutes and some taking much longer, usually as a result of me not being able to find a key or a door. If you want to try all the mods out, you've got a lot of content to try. A particularly interesting one was Wrecker, where you have a crossbow and fight completely different enemies in a Viking-inspired fantasy setting. But as novel as the idea was, I felt the quality wasn't that high. It was probably a good 25 years ago though. Doom also features a local multiplayer feature, where up to four people can play through the game in a co-op or a deathmatch. This is something that would be fun with friends, but nothing I'd take too seriously. As the game is easy to pick up and play, it may be something your non-gamer friends would join in on too, which I think might make this a potentially good sofa party game. Doom was a fantastic looking game for its time, and if you take its age into consideration, it still looks fine. It runs very smoothly on my Xbox Series X, with no slowdown whatsoever as you'd expect. There are a few weird quirks, such as dead bodies only being able to be viewed from one angle, so the feet follow you around the room, which is fairly odd. There are also a lot of dark areas which I wasn't a big fan of. I don't mind a bit of darkness for atmosphere, but some areas are an absolute joke and I couldn't see a thing. The sounds are a mixed bag. The classic Doom music is iconic and still rocks. The gun sounds are nice, door openings and switches make satisfying sounds, but a lot of the monster sounds started to grate on me pretty quickly. There are not that many sounds they make and the stereo sound doesn't work very well meaning that locating enemies based on sound is nearly impossible. And to this day, I still have no idea why the soldier people seem to oink like pigs. Another strange thing in this game is the absence of a y-axis to your controls, so you can't physically aim up or down. The game just auto-shoots high or low if there is an enemy there. You can't jump or climb onto any platforms either. These are some of the things that FPS games have built upon once Doom laid the foundations for them and shows the age of the game. Apparently there is a story in Doom, although you wouldn't know it when playing. All you get is a few paragraphs of text in between chapters to explain why you're in random mazes killing hordes of bad guys. It's minimal content to say the least, but most people won't care. Doom 2 is also available on Xbox Game Pass and is very similar to the first game. 
It features more enemy types, improved sounds, slightly better textures, and a new weapon in the Super Shotgun. The game shares the same game modes and multiplayer content as the first game. So, if you like Doom 1, I would recommend playing Doom 2 as well. So, to summarise, Doom is a gaming classic that every FPS fan should play, as it laid down many of the foundations that modern shooters are built on. It is an important part of gaming history. But, of course, there have been massive improvements in graphics and game design since then, and the game does feel very dated as a result. If you're into classic gaming, you'll probably love this. But for me, this game serves as a reminder on how far games, and especially first-person shooters, have come. There is plenty of content which should keep you going for a while, and this game barely takes up any room on your hard drive, which is a nice bonus too. I'm going to give Doom a D. I'm going to give Doom 2 a D. Have you played Doom? Have you played the sequels or played it on any other format? What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. I currently stream a new title every Sunday evening UK time on Twitch at rosterboss underscore official. So join me there to see another new Xbox Game Pass or Game on Gold title being playtested. And or join me on Tuesday evenings for regular PUBG action. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. Thank you for watching, see you next time.